So friends, today we are witnessing another Wagner Group inclusion, but this time not towards Moscow, but towards Poland. Just yesterday, the propaganda claimed that Wagner was indeed hidden to Poland, and later the Prime Minister of Poland, Morawiecki, made a statement making the situation even more dangerous. There is information that over 100 missionaries from the Wagner Group have moved toward the Suwaki Gap near Grodno in Belarus. This is undoubtedly a step forward a further hybrid attack on Polish territory. This situation is becoming more unstable and it seems that the Russian plan to shift Wagner to Belarus is becoming clearer. To understand the extent of the danger, take a look at the map. It's evident that the town of Grodno, where Wagner operatives have been spotted, is only 12 kilometers away from the Polish border. Having such a group near the border was undoubtedly race concerns, and for now it could be reconnaissance or atom to gag reactions, and we will see what the next steps will be. And the second important news is the morning that Russians weren't expecting. Explosions occurred in Moscow. A drone flew straight into the Moscow city complex. The blast took place on the fifth, sixth floor of a 50-story building known as the IQ Quarter within Moscow City. The drone hit one of the offices, causing damage over the lower floors as well. Everyone in the tower was evacuated and, according to Russian media, three Russian ministries are also housed in the same building – the Minister of Economic Development, the Minister of Industry and Trade, and the Minister of Communications. The Russians didn't even attempt to shoot down the drones, but used electronic warfare equipment in a residential area, causing the drones to lose control. And meanwhile, there is another betrayal from Elon Musk. He denied the Ukrainian armed forces' request to include Starlink coverage in the occupied Crimea region, affecting their military operations. This was reported by the New York Times, and Musk has previously restricted Starlink access during military actions. However, there is good news too that Pentagon will buy Starlink terminals for Ukraine, which Musk won't be able to disable. The Pentagon approved the deal in June and it involves 400 and 500 such terminals. And in summer, Russian forces launched a missile strike on civilians. On the evening of July 29th, around 8 p.m., a hostile missile hit an educational institution in the city of Sumen. Unfortunately, it resulted in at least two civilian fatalities and 20 injuries. Police, rescues and medical personnel are on site, dealing with the aftermath of the fire. And before we proceed to the frontline overview, I kindly ask you to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. As for active phase of counteroffensive from both sides, it's ongoing. The occupiers are advancing in the Lugansk region due to the fast delivery of equipment and ammunition from Russian territory. The Ukrainian armed forces, on the other hand, are advancing in the southern regions to cut off the large grouping of occupiers from their land corridor to Russia. And to achieve this, they need to advance to Militopol and deliver a powerful blow to the bridge to disable it completely. Only then will the massive Russian forces be trapped. And as of now, the movement has just started, and today there are battles hidden towards Stokmark, which is 14 kilometers away. The front line remains unchanged and the occupiers continue shelling along the entire front line, but there are no reports of active offensive actions. In the direction of Vulidar, the advancements of our forces has currently stalled. Today, due to the extensive fortifications and minefields, progress remains slow, and the situation is similar in the direction of Kharkiv. After the liberation of the settlement, we had to pause to the strengthened positions and regroup. Powerful artillery preparation is also underway against the occupied positions and minefields to facilitate gradual advancements. 
the Russians are very displeased with the Ukrainian forces' advances and find themselves retreating. They complain about it in Telegram channels, but can't do anything about it. And in the direction of Kherson, the occupiers are continuous shelling in the vicinity of Kherson, Novakakhovka, and have increased strikes near Zolota Balka, close to the dried up reservoir. During this shelling, the occupiers hit a grain terminal. The head of the military administration, Alexander Prokudin, reported that the Russians shelled the region 29 times in the past day, with 11 projectiles hit on Kherson. It seems that the occupiers are becoming fearful of potential Ukrainian advance in this direction towards Energodar and the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, leading to an escalation in shelling. This situation at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant remains tense. The station completed the transfer of the 5th powerful unit to cold shutdown, while the 4th unit was switched to hot shutdown, as reported by the International Atomic Energy Agency. It is also reported that yesterday there was a strike on the Changar Bridge. The occupiers are trying to carefully conceal this information, but videos from people stuck in a huge traffic jam were leaked online, making it impossible to hide. And in the direction of Avdivka, the occupiers have lost a significant number of reserves. While they have been advancing daily, the front line remains unchanged. Consequently, all attacks have ceased today and there are regrouping efforts and continued challenge. And further south, there are only battles reported in Marinka, but the situation along the rest of the front line remains unchanged. And in the direction of Bakhmut, the occupiers are attempting to shout the positions of Ukrainian forces to hinder their advancement and encirclement of Bakhmut. However, according to the latest reports, the Ukrainian forces have already entered the city and are engaged in street battles with the occupiers. And in the area of Klishivka and Andreevka, there are currently no reported changes. In the area of Krimina and Sivers, the attacks by Russian forces along Belgorivka continue, but the settlement remains under Ukrainian control. The Ukrainian forces show no intention of surrendering and are maintaining their defense. In the Svatova area, the situation has stabilized. The occupiers have halted all attacks after their unsuccessful advance on Novoselivsky and are currently only engaged in shelling. In the Dvorichna area, there are sporadic shelling incidents and no offensive actions are being observed. And tonight the Russian army attacked Zmi in the island. Two unidentifiable model aerial bombs were dropped on the island. According to the operational command, this is the third attack on the island. And the Wall Street Journal reports that Saudi Arabia is planning to hold peace talks regarding Ukraine in August. The talks are scheduled to take place in Jeddah, and it's interesting, representatives from 30 countries have already received invitations, but Russia wasn't invited. Interesting. Why? And the last piece of news for today is the arrival of a UNESCO mission in Odessa. The organization staff will assess the damage inflicted by the Russians on cultural and religious sites during the period from July 90 to July 23. And that's all I have for now. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.